Hi everyone, I'm back again. Hope you're all doing well. Um, if you haven't watched my latest video yet, it's not this video, go and watch that because uh, it's me finding out whether I got into Cambridge or not. So check that out now because, spoiler alert, I did get in. Yay! <laughs> but after I posted it, I realised that I got a lot of questions asking about my course what it is, what it involves, all, all that sort of stuff. So I thought that I would cover that in this video. And if you have any more questions, then pop it in the comments below. And if enough people ask it, I might answer it in a video, in a video or just reply. To start with, what am I actually studying? <laughs> it's an MPhil in the History and Philosophy of Science and Medicine. MPhil means Master of Philosophy. That means it's a Master's Research Degree. MPhil in History and Philosophy of Science and Medicine is a bit of a mouthful, really. As it stands, I only really plan to study the Philosophy of Science bit, but that could change. But for brevity, I might just refer to Philosophy of Science Masters. The follow-up question to that is usually, what is Philosophy of Science, though? <laughs> and that is a very good question. It is basically... I'm trying to think how to describe it. It's asking deep questions about scientific stuff. Basically, philosophy is basically asking deep questions. So this is asking deep questions about scientific stuff. So, for example, stuff like, why does the universe actually exist in the first place? Or do animals have common sense? I'm trying to think of like things to explain off the top of my head. Um, why is the scientific method done how it is? Do we actually gain knowledge from doing science? Those are just some things I've pulled out the top of my head to sort of give you a taste of what sort of things philosophy of science looks into. How can we prove a, a scientific fact to be true? How do we know that if you drop a ball 10 times and it falls to the ground, it will fall to the ground on the 11th time you drop it? So. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit abstract, but I hope that that helps you understand what it is a bit more. And yeah, deep questions, science. And one part of the course I'm really interested in studying is the philosophy of physics, but I think that's going to be so cool. That actually brings me on to the next question people ask, which is why have you gone to studying this from a maths degree? And yeah, that is because... I've done philosophy or RS, religious studies, that sort of thing. I did it at GCSE, I took it to A level. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed philosophy and things like that. I took a module in philosophy of science at my second year of uni and I loved it. I loved the links to maths. Why, it, why is maths real? You know, questions like that. Is maths actually real or is it something we've made up to try and understand things? or is there actually a mathematical pattern to stuff? So I really enjoyed the crossover of two of my really big interests, maths and sort of physics and philosophy. And yeah, this just meets it perfectly. During my maths degree, I think I, I struggled a lot with the exam sort of structure of a science degree. With essay based subjects, you get you know, a few weeks to write an essay to be graded. Whereas for science-based subjects, a lot of time it's one exam on the day that just counts for your grade. So if you're having a bad day, then <laughs> I don't know. So I do really appreciate that side of things more in an essay subject. I've always enjoyed writing. I love writing stuff and yeah I like to write about maths as well. With my interest in that side of things uh, I wanted to do a master's in it. <laughs> as for the course itself it's assessed by three essays of 5,000 words each and a dissertation of about 12,000 words. I sort of come up with the questions and research them, write essays about them with the help of a supervisor and after that course, if you want, you can go on to a PhD. Which brings me on to the next question. What do you want to do with this course? What do you want to do when you finish with this course? Good question. Um, <clears throat> I'm in two minds about going into a PhD. 
uh, I might want to go into a PhD, but I don't know if I want to do something else first. I really like, I really like working in the media and things like that. I think I told my interviewer I wanted to be a science communicator. That's still on the cards. I'm hoping that in the year I'll, I'll work out what it is I want to do. I'm trying to think of any more questions you might have. Oh, I got one. Um, so you might be thinking, uh, why did you choose Cambridge? Just why? Why did I apply to Cambridge? The course itself, as you might have guessed, is quite a niche course, Philosophy of Science. I think, though, it's a, it's a really growing field. It's, it's going to be really exciting to see how it progresses in the next few decades or so. But yeah, the course is very niche, so not many universities in the UK offer it. Other universities I looked at that offered similar courses or offered sort of philosophy of science as a component of the course I could choose. I looked at Edinburgh, Bristol, LSE. Uh, I applied to Oxford and got rejected from Oxford, but whatever. <laughs> so yeah, the, those were, I think, oh, I looked at Exeter as well. But the problem is, like, all of those unis, bar Oxford, Cambridge and LSE, I think I looked at UCL as well, yeah, all of those unis, apart from those three, didn't offer any funding, like, at all. Uh, I don't think Bristol offered any funding for it, and the Bristol course is actually more expensive than the Cambridge course, and... Bristol is a very expensive city to live in. The accommodation offered by the uni of Bristol is very expensive and uh, cost was a thing, was was a factor in my decision. Oxford and Cambridge do offer um, lots of scholarships and things. Yeah, same with Edinburgh. Edinburgh is the, I think last time I checked, it's the third richest university in the UK. It had no funding at all. It, it was crazy. So money and as well I really wanted to study at Cambridge. It has its own philosophy of science department. That's how much attention is paid to the discipline at the university. Cambridge is a beautiful city, I visited it before. Um, I like the collegiate system. So yeah, I essentially the reasons for picking Cambridge was I like the uni, um, funding available and it pays a lot of attention to the specific discipline of philosophy of science and having its own philosophy of science department. Yeah, and it, it's just that amazing research opportunity to study and learn from the best. <laughs> and lastly, just um, I liked the course itself, obviously, <laughs> otherwise I wouldn't have applied. I liked the course itself and the course itself has something like 12 areas of philosophy of science you can study and you pick three or four from those 12 areas. So one of the areas is like history of medicine, history of medieval scientific instruments. And then you've got other ones like philosophy of the life sciences, philosophy of the physical sciences, things like that. So I've picked philosophy of the physical sciences, philosophy of the life sciences, um, and metaphysics and epistemology, something like that. Um, I'm really excited to start. And um, last question, I guess, is when do you start? Also a good question. I'm waiting to hear more from my college on that. I heard from Cambridge very late, which wasn't Cambridge's fault. It's because I was going through an appeals process with Nottingham that took like the whole of August and then some. It was really exhausting and I'll chat more about what happened there in another video and yeah i start officially the start date is first of october but i think i move in a few days before that and i'm really excited <laughs> i can't wait um before in august when the whole thing was going with nottingham and it was kind of looking like i might not get into cambridge and stuff i i felt like always a bit sad going through the stationery sections of shops because I love to shop for new stationery for uni and things but that just reminded me that oh it's all in the air right now and but I'm, I'm so excited like I just oh yeah 
so yeah i hope that clears things up for you any more questions pop them in the comments i'll put the link to the course page if you want to have a look for yourself i'd highly recommend looking into philosophy of science as well it's really really interesting at least i think it is i'm biased so aren't i <laughs> but it's something that both scientists and humanities people can like find interest in yeah i just think it's cool <laughs> and i can't wait to start studying it i'm I've, i think after three years of a maths degree any doing a degree in any subject does kind of your passion for that subject does end up taking a bit of a hit, I think, at the end. I don't know if it could just be fatigue from studying it or something like that, I don't know, but I know that that's common for a lot of people. So it does feel refreshing and a bit of a new start and I'm feeling really energised and excited to study about this area that is right at the intersection of two of my favourite things, science and philosophy um so yeah you'll be hearing more from me soon and like i said any questions pop them in the comments and i will do my best to answer bye